In this video, I'm going to go over AP Precalculus Topic 212, which is about logarithmic function manipulation. Um, so first I want to talk about the basic properties of logarithms, um, and then do this special case with natural logarithms. Okay, so just some basic properties. Most of these revolve around just the definition of logs. Um, log base b of 1 is 0, because b, the power that you would have to raise anything by that would be 1, is 0. So zero, anything to the 0th power is 1. Log base b of b is 1. And again, thinking b to what power would give us b will always be 1. Um, and then those inverse relationships, that log base b of b to the x is x, and then the flip of that b raised to the log base b of x cancels to x. And this follows with all bases, but natural log is one that we use quite a bit. Uh, so natural log of 1 is 0, natural log of e is 1, natural log of e to the x is just x, and e to the natural log of x is also x. Okay, so we can use those properties for some simple uh, simplification. Um, so log base 12 of 12 to the x plus 2 is just going to be that x plus 2. 10 raised to the log base 10 of sine of x is just sine of x. Natural log of e to the x squared is just x squared. And e to the natural log of 7 is just 7. Now logarithms have some other properties, and these all come from our properties for exponents, because uh, a logarithm is really an exponent. Uh, so with my product property, if we have the log of a product, so log of something times something, we can expand that using what's called the product property to log base b of x plus log base b of y. It doesn't multiply here, it adds, because when we, uh, again, just rules of exponents. Um, quotient rule. If instead of a product, we have a quotient, it's basically the same thing, but with subtraction. And again, when we're dividing things with the same base, we subtract those exponents. The power property. Okay, so if I have log base b of something to a power, we can multiply that power out front and get this. Now, just a note on this, that this k... This is equivalent to log base b of x to the k. The x is getting raised to the k, so we understand that in this notation, um, but that's an important note. It doesn't equal log base b of x to the k. The k power is applying just to that x, not the whole function. Uh, last property is the change of base property. Okay, so if I have log base b of x, we're going to introduce a new base, and I'm going to call my new base a, but it's going to be log base a of x, whatever goes here, over log base a of b. Okay, now I'm going to use those properties to rewrite some expressions. Uh, so using the product property, log base 3 of a plus log base 3 of b, will be log base 3 of a times b. If we're subtracting, that becomes division. So log base 5 of 10 over x. This one, it's already a single one, but I want to emphasize our power property. So if I have natural log of, so 4 natural log of x becomes the natural log of x to the fourth. Okay, here I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm first going to apply the power property because I can't combine them until that exponent, uh, that coefficient becomes an exponent. Okay, well, this is the same as log base 4 of 8 minus log base 4 of e. 
Okay, and then I can use that quotient property. So this is equivalent to log base 4 of 8 over b. Okay. Uh, so first I'll deal with those exponents. So natural log w squared minus natural log x cubed plus natural log of 5. Okay. Then I'm going to combine these two. So that'll be natural log w squared over x cubed. And finally, we're going to have the product property. So I'm multiplying these two things together. So I can write that as natural log 5 w squared over x cubed as a single log. This one, I don't have a log here. So we need to think about how to change that. And one simple way to do that is just replace, uh, use that inverse property. Okay, where I can rewrite 2 as log base 5 of 5 to the 2. I know this simplifies to 2. Now this I can rewrite as 25. And then I can combine them with our product property. Next, I'm going to go in the other direction. We're going to expand these. Okay, so I have subtraction here. Um, then we typically, depending on what we're doing with it, but likely moving that exponent down is helpful. Okay. Here. Uh, I've got three things I'm multiplying. So I'm going to have log 3 plus log a plus log b. And I'm going to rate, change that square root to a 1 half power. And then bring that power down. Okay. Last one. This will be natural log e squared minus natural log of 10. And then natural log of e squared simplifies to 2 using that inverse relationship. So we get 2 minus natural log of 10. Okay, then we're going to go back to some graphical transformation. So we've got um, our different logs, and there's a coefficient of x, uh, which is going to affect the graph of, from the parent graph. Um, so we're going to look at three different cases here. Um, so if my parent graph is log 2x, if we multiply this inside piece by 8, that's going to be a horizontal dilation. Okay, so a horizontal dilation. Uh, and then it's going to be the reciprocal of whatever this value is here. So this one's going to have a horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 8th. That graph is going to get compressed horizontally. If I use my properties of logs, I can rewrite this as log 2 8 plus log 2 x, which I can further simplify to uh, 3 plus log 2 x. So this also has a graphic transformation, um, but written this way, when I take my parent function and add 3 to that, that's a vertical translation. It's going to move the graph up 3. It's still going to be the same graph, uh, but we can describe the transformations as either a horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 eighth or a vertical translation. Okay, next one. Uh, my parent would be log base 4 here. And then we're going to do the same thing. If this is a 3, we're going to have a horizontal dilation of 1 third. Okay, then I can rewrite this using our properties of logs. Okay, so this one doesn't simplify down as pretty as this one does, but log base 4 of 3 is just some power. 
Uh, so this is also going to be a vertical translation. Okay, so you kind of see a pattern, but let's do one more. Uh, this one's parent's going to be log of x. This is going to be a horizontal dilation. And that dilation factor will be 10, since it's the reciprocal of 1 tenth. Uh, then I can split this up to be log x minus log 10. Log of 10 is just 1, because 10 to the first is 1. Uh, so this is, again, a vertical translation. This one will just move it down. So our conclusion. Uh, for every horizontal dilation of a logarithmic function, there is an equivalent vertical translation. And this is just something that you can get to pretty quickly just using the properties of logarithms. So we have log base 2 of x to the fourth. Now that's not really a transformation we really talked about, but specific to logs, if I've got log base 2 of x to the fourth, I can rewrite that as 4 log base 2 of x, which now I have a vertical dilation. Okay, my graph's going to be stretched vertically by a factor of 4. Here, this is equivalent to one half log x. So that's going to be a vertical dilation by a factor of one half. So that graph is going to get compressed vertically. Uh, so again, our conclusion, raising the input of a logarithmic function to a power results in a vertical dilation. And again, that's just something you can arrive pretty quickly at using those properties of logs, which we will be using a lot in our next couple of lessons. Uh, the last property that I gave you was the change of base equation. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this using a new base of 5. So this is equivalent to log base 5 of x over log base 5 of 2. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this just for the purposes of this analysis as 1 over log base 5 of 2 times log base 5 of x. Because x is my variable, 1 over log base 2 of 5, that's just some coefficient. Uh, so what ends up happening is this is going to be a vertical dilation. By a factor of 1 over log base 5 of 2. Um, so this property uh, illustrates that logarithmic functions are all vertical dilations of each other because I can introduce any base and it's suddenly going to be a vertical dilation of some other base. So this was log base 2, this is log base 5, um, but these are equivalent statements so I could write log base or I could graph this with this vertical dilation becomes this, and this works with all bases. Uh, so anyways, so just some little relationships between the properties of logs and how that kind of plays out graphically. Uh, thank you for watching.